in my life, I've detailed a lot of really interesting things. But recently I was called and asked if I could polish out the scratches in a 1970 Plymouth Superbird back window. And the reason they were asking me to sand out the scratch or to polish out the scratches was because the entire car was fully restored and it looked freaking amazing, except the back window. The back window was just filled with scratches everywhere. And they're just random, you know, zigzaggy, straight, circular. Uh, sometimes they were just scuffs, scuffs in the glass. And they're pretty much dispersed throughout the entire back window, mostly on the outside. There was a few light scratches or marring on the inside, but primarily it was all on the outside. So here you can see um, myself and a, another technician, we, we just lifted the glass out of the back frame of the car. It was not secured. There was no gasket. There was no trim because they really just, they did not want to put the glass in because it looked so bad. Okay, so then we set it down on a, what's called a, an, X, an X stand. See the letter X there, kind of out of the uh, stand legs. They call it an X stand, a lot of people call it a fender stand. And now I was able to really uh, put a swirl finder light on there and start to reveal some of the scratches. And what you can see besides the deeper random scratches is just your common swirls like you find in car paint. So the entire back window needed to be polished but the most severe scratches, we're gonna find out after a little bit of testing, they would have to be machine sanded out. The timing of this was very unique. At the time, I actually, uh, I was not employed by Dr. Beasley's. Um, I was just detailing cars full time, but by coincidence, uh, Jim Lefebvre, the, uh, the owner, CEO, and head chemist at Dr. Beasley's, was formulating a brand new glass polish and he had sent me a sample to test out which which i did test out on a 1969 gto and the glass polish works great but the formula needed a little bit of tweaking so i took my experience buffing out the 1969 windshield on the night or the windshield on the 1969 gto and gave Jim some feedback, and that's where he came up with three different versions, um, each kind of tweaked in a different way. And one of them you'll see says 560BMP. The MP stands for Mike Phillips, and these were some of the specific changes that I had asked for to make this a uh, just an easier to use polish. The, the function of it was perfect. It just needed to be a little bit uh, more lubrication, basically, so you could buff. Because when you're buffing glass with the rotor, you do tend to create quite a bit of heat. So here we've got the glass spread out. I have this orange blanket um, underneath the center of the windshield to really supply a lot of support to the glass itself. You don't want to put the glass down on a table so all the pressure's on the edges of the glass. Um, and then, then you start pushing down with the rotary polisher or a sander uh, and put some pressure on it, you, you risk cracking the glass. So we supported it uh, thoroughly You're just using this folded blanket. So it's really thick, but also very soft. So during the process, we wouldn't be putting scratches on the inside of the glass. After doing a little bit of polishing, what we found out was all the light or shallow scratches polished out, but the deeper ones, there's just no way. It had to be machine sanded. And this is where, um, you know, you really gotta have confidence in your tools, uh, your process, and even yourself because as I always tell people, sanding glass is easy. Sanding is putting scratches in. The tricky part is getting them out. And not just getting them out, getting them 100% out. So what we're gonna do is put this through a multiple step sanding process starting with 180 grit. And um, in, the, in the glass sanding world, you really gotta start with the lower grits because the higher grits, they just won't even break through the smooth hard shell on the outer surface of the glass. So this was the first step, and notice I'm wearing a, a, a dust mask. And, and believe it or not, um, this type of glass isn't actually dangerous to breathe, okay, because it's called amorphous glass. So it's been changed, and it's not gonna cause the kind of silicosis problems in your lungs like other types of glass. But it's still a good idea to wear safety glasses, hearing protection, and breathing protection. 
So we sanded it down, and then what you're seeing in this picture right here, this is after sanding with 180 grit. And um, this was sanded down once until the sanding disc pretty much had been used up. It was no longer really abrading the glass. And then there's this one section here that I took a close up of where it kind of looks darker than all the rest of the glass around it that's actually been sanded. And what this is, is this is lower. This, this is a lower surface of the glass. And so when you're sanding, the sanding abrasives are not touching it so that it stayed clear. It looks like it's black, but it's actually clear. It just has a black towel underneath of it. Uh, but what this tells me is also that the mold that was used to make the glass wasn't perfect. Otherwise, it would have been completely flat and everything was sanded out evenly as you're sanding. So we put a fresh disc on and went back and re-sanded the entire windshield until all uh, all the areas were completely sanded and had a uniform uh, ugly or you know, uniform, uniform sanded look to them. And as we were sanding, um, you can see the scratches um, as they start to come out. And um, it's very noticeable, you know, especially with good light, you can see where the deeper scratches remain. And then you come back and you sand. But the thing about that is, is you can't just sand right on the scratch. Otherwise you'll leave a visual imperfection in that area because you'll remove material and it'll have a lower depression than the surrounding surfaces. So when you find these deeper scratches like this, the correct way to sand them out is to continue sanding the entire a chunk of glass, you know, the uniform overlapping process. And you also move the polisher in an orbital motion as you're sanding. You just don't guide the polisher back and forth or side to side. You actually move the polisher in an orbital motion. So after the 180, then we resanded with 360. So now what we're doing is we're actually refining 180 grit to 360 grit. And we're gonna work through this progression all the way up to 4,000 grit. And then as you're sanding, it's a good idea once in a while just to stop and take a nylon brush and you can quickly remove all this glass powder off the face of the disc. And this, this just allows the disc to sand more efficiently to get the already removed material off the face of the disc. So then after uh, the 360, we went with a 500 grit and remachine re sanded. But if you look at the glass, it still looks pretty hazy, even after 360. So you don't see much refinement from 180 to 360. So here I am, I'm sanding with the 500. You still see a lot of sanding dust coming off the glass. So the 500 is really digging in and cutting and refining 360 to 500. Next, we went to 1000. And uh, same kind of thing, just gotta completely resand the entire glass using a back and forth side to side motion, but also moving the polisher in an orbital action. And the reason you're doing that is just to make sure that there's no variance in how much material is taken out in one place compared to all the other areas of the glass. You're the goal is to remove the defects by leveling the surface of the glass without making any ruts or patterns in the glass so it would cause a visual distortion. After the 1000, we went to 2000. And you can see me sanding, but if you look at the glass, notice how it's starting to become very clear, okay? So look at this next picture. Look how clear the glass is below the sanding disc I'm holding. So the, the 1000 refined the 500 and now the 2000 refined the 1000 grits. And now for the last sanding step, we're going to 4000. And we're gonna machine sand the entire glass with one with 4000 grit. And, um, and what this is gonna do is leave a very shallow sanding mark pattern that'll buff out a lot faster than if we just stopped at a lower grit. And I know I've actually met some people that say 4,000 grit won't sand glass, and that's true if you're starting out on glass. It won't break through the glass, you know, and score it in a way that it can continue sanding it. But once you've scored the glass or sanded it and you have a texture there, when you come back with 4,000, it will sand and refine the scratches. And one of the ways you can kind of tell is if it, if it, if it wasn't sanding, there would be no sanding dust on my the face of my sanding disc. But as you can see, as I clean this disc, I'm pulling sanding dust off. So yes, the 4000 will in fact refine three, 2000 and 3000 to a less a more shallow sanding mark pattern, which will make it easier to buff out. Here we go, here's the before. So this is with 180 grit, and here's after 4000. So we put it through a 
it's a five or a six step process of sanding. And even though the glass looks clear, if you were there in person and you were to look at it, you would see little pigtail sanding marks everywhere. So you can't just sand and stop. The next step is the polishing step. Now this is where we're gonna use the new Dr. Beasley's NSP GL glass polish. And the final production version is the version that Jim uh, formulated and tweaked uh, to some of the requirements I was asking for, which was basically more lubrication to allow the pad to uh, spin over the surface uh, and create less heat while still cutting at the same time. So it's a tweaked formula, it worked awesome. And this stuff takes a little while. Uh, the sanding goes pretty quick. After you break through the, uh, the initial glaze on the outer surface of the glass, the sanding stuff goes pretty quick. The polishing step, I probably had about an hour into machine polishing to remove 100% of all the sanding marks. And then towards the very end, um, as, if you get down and you start to inspect that glass very closely, that's where you start to find some scratches right around the very edges. And basically it's just harder to sand with a big uh, five inch or say six inch disc around the edges compared to just sanding out in the middle of the glass. That's pretty easy, you just run the buffer over the middle. As you get towards the edges, you gotta start being more careful because you don't want the pad to grab the edge and throw the glass off the window, off the workbench. Uh, so you just gotta be more careful and be more careful sometimes that ends up leaving some of the smaller scratches that you didn't get out. So the way I like to tackle those is I come back with a three inch disc and just put a, a dab of polish right on top of the scratch and then just work it for a few, uh, up to a minute or so. You don't wanna get it too hot. Basically what I do is I put a dab of polish on all the different scratches around the outer edges. And then what I do is I just go from one to the next. So that way I'm only buffing for about a minute on one of the scratches before I move on to the next one. And the reason for that is so you don't overheat the glass by just staying in one section and buffing and buffing and buffing until that scratch is gone. If you do that, um, you will superheat the glass. So it's better to kind of buff a little bit, then move to another scratch, buff it a little bit, then move to another scratch, then just circle back. So it, while you're buffing other small scratches out, the glass is cooling down where you, you were previously buffing. And here is the final uh, results. And I'm gonna hold this up because I want the camera to be able to look and see through it. And you can see it's perfectly clear. So this was uh, about a five hour process to sand it and polish it, but the results speak for themselves. And then uh, the next day, the glass installer came, installed the glass, and just like the rest of the car, it looked amazing. It looked like nothing had ever been wrong with the glass. There were no sign of any swirls or any scratches and it just completed the entire look for this beautiful 1970 Plymouth Superbird that underwent a 10 year restoration with the last leg of the process just being to perfect the glass. And the real star of this whole process was the Dr. Beasley's NSP GL glass polish. Beautiful car and now the glass really kind of finished it off. This car, this bird is ready to fly. And you can get all the Dr. Beasley products, including the rayon pads that we recommend with this glass polish and the glass polish itself at drbeasleys.com. And if you have any questions about glass polishing, uh, I'm pretty easy to reach. You can find me at mike at drbeasleys.com or just give me a call on my cell phone, 760-515-0444. Always happy to help see you through to success with your detailing projects.